our guest is um, a, a brilliant musician and a, a wonderful guy and one of my uh, favorite human beings uh, who happens to also have the uh, the birthday of April 22nd. Oh. Yes, he that's is, right. uh, yes, he that's is uh, Peter Frampton. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Frampton, sir. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of a friend because I listened to your book uh, in audio form, and you took the time and trouble to actually narrate it, so you were in my head for a dozen hours plus. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, well, for me, it was, by the way, do we need masks on Zoom? Uh, I think we're okay. I, I, <laughs> okay. You're but far I, enough I do, away, I think. Yeah, I, I, I dare I go, do you feel like a mask? <laughs> I, <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, you know, I've got the latest prototype Mac, and it does now have smell a vision so oh boy i'm gonna put okay. mine on then yeah, yeah i think it's a good idea yeah. before, you know, we, I, before we get to anything interesting i would <laughs> i'm sure that you get recognized all the time when when you're on tour and you go down to have some breakfast does the waiter say do you feel like a sausage <laughs> do they do they, they, they have to incorporate day. one of those great lines yeah, no, but they know I'm vegetarian, so they would never say that. So. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that as well. Now, here's a question you probably don't want to answer. Are we over with the cigarettes? Are they done? Oh, cigarettes, gone, gone, gone. Many, many years. Okay. I was 42 when I got rid of those. Okay, because I noticed on the cover of the album, it's a very hairy Mr. Frampton with a cigarette looking pensive off you, the cover. You mean the book? Uh, the, the book, excuse me, the book, the book. The book. Yeah. The book. yeah. I'm, I'm, it, was, um, <laughs> it was a... Um, uh, a photo from the, uh, I guess, either the Oakland or the San Francisco paper at the time we did that uh, day on the green, which was, I think, the one in 75, maybe, before the live album came out. And um, I'd never seen those shots before. So we were looking for something that was from that period but that it, no one had ever seen before. So I said, well, that's definitely one. And then, of course, everyone said, well, you can't have the cigarette. I said, well, it'll look weird if we Photoshop out the cigarette. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, it's I, rock and roll, for Christ's sake. Yeah. It's history. We all smoked, you know. It's It was wrong, but we didn't know that. Yeah, I I, um, I love the book. I, your story is, is, is a great story, and um, I'm not going to make you retell Tons of it. I there were there were a couple of interesting things. Your dad was an artist. I thought there was a really funny moment. Your father was a, a, a teacher, and among his students was a young David Jones, David Bowie. You tell a story of going to some party, and there are all these hip people there, and Bowie runs over to your dad to hang. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was backstage at the announcement in New York. I think it was the Cat Club um, when we announced the Glass Spider tour, and we did a half pre press conference and half performance, you know, four or five numbers. And my parents came because, you know, David knew them both for years. So um, after the show, we're backstage and I'm talking to mom and, and uh, I said, where's dad? She, oh, I don't know. He went off with David somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, so they, they had a, a great relationship, my, uh, my father and David, um, from way back, you know, when yeah. he... My dad realized that he was pretty special creatively in the arts, let alone music. You know. Yeah. Do you have any of your dad's paintings? I have. Um, he would never. Um, he would never paint something. He was a, a pen and ink guy, so he did uh, illustration kind of thing. He did paint as well, but his forte was pen and ink, and phenomenal stuff he would do. But I had to force him in later life to actually do me one, you know, do Good. one for me. And then, of course, he would never sign it because he said, ah, no one needs to know who did this. Uh -oh. So he was very, very modest man. And uh, I cherish uh, what I have. I have a sketch and then I have a full full pen and ink painting. Uh, we're speaking with uh, Peter Frampton and um, uh, Peter's book, um, something that I read a while back it was right. fantastic. But Pete, let's talk about uh, Peter. Let's talk about what's happening now. A, a new record. What's it, what's it called? What's it, what's it going to be like? Well, it's instrumental. And so it's called Frampton forgets the words. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a pretty good title. <laughs> this is, this is not I your, this is not your first instrumental album. Um, no, it's not. No, but I have to give credit to Gordon Kennedy, my writing partner, because he we were thinking about titles for the first one, which ended up being Fingerprints. And um, 
but I said, I'm, we can't forget that title. Uh, Frampton forgets the words. It's, uh, <laughs> but the first one, I wanted to be a little bit more serious. Um, so, uh, yeah, we saved it. I saved it. Okay. And, and uh, was there was a Grammy involved in that other one, I believe. Yes, there was. That was a big surprise. Um, and very welcome. Uh, you know, awards are weird. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's the Hall of Fame, it's a Grammy, it's an Oscar, it's a this. But who who says that, you know, like even in the Oscars, you see these there's five incredible actors, incredible performances. And how do you choose the best? You know, they're all they're obviously in that category because they're all so phenomenal at what they do, you know. So I'm, I'm not big on awards, but but I like the Grammy. Yeah. As, as I recall, <laughs> you, you said something like you were nominated once as a rock star, but you were glad to win as a musician. Something to that yeah. effect, yeah. Um, uh, and, and I also said I think I never got a Grammy before um, until I stopped singing. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you. One of the one of the sort of themes of the book is that your friend uh, David Bowie, in a way, saved you by signing you on as a side man uh, yeah. on the Glass Spider tour. And, and that's did, my. Go ahead. How much Sorry. singing did you do on that? Did you step up and do a tune of your own? I'm trying to remember. No, um, it, D David. It wasn't about me at all. It was me. The the. Uh, it was me, the hired gun, basically. David, um, I, I sang one one song. I split the the um, um, I, I split the vocal with with David. I sang the chorus. He sang the verses, um, and I did a tiny bit of backup vocal. But I said to David at rehearsals, "I really don't. There's enough people here to do backgrounds. Um, I'd really just prefer to uh, concentrate on." playing guitar for you. And he said, fine. Okay. Uh, on the um, new album, uh, are, are the songs, I haven't heard it yet, so are the songs uh, uh, covers? Are they originals, instrumentals? What uh, What do we have? They're, they're all covers um, because um, I was able to, right before the finale tour, we recorded three and a half albums um, in about a three month period. All blues, this one, um, well, there's another blues album, a whole other blues album, um, re mixed and ready to go at some point. Um, but we wanted to change it up a little. Then we did the uh, Frampton Forgets the Words mm -hmm. instrumental. And that was, again, it was all my band. So all blues, the other blues record, and and this, this album is the Peter Frampton band. Because I just said to everybody, make lists of your favorite songs for the blues, your favorite songs for the instrumental record. And so it was an amalgamation of, of uh, uh, camaraderie there. And uh, it was so great to come straight off the road from the Steve Miller, two summers with Steve Miller, take about nine days off, go into the studio, and we were well oiled. <laughs> so we we like, I think we did close to 60 blues tracks. Oh, great. Um, and they're all live, singing live, playing live. So it was back to the old days. And the instrumental record, there's only a couple, I think, where I had to lay down acoustic first without playing the <clears throat> without playing the lead on the live session. But uh, 90%, 85%, say, uh, of forgets the words is uh, me playing live as the as we're doing the track. Once again, our guest is Peter Frampton. If you're watching the, the video version of this, that's quite clear. Are, are you going to be able to uh, tour again at all? I know that you were kind of doing a final thing in between uh, COVID, and I know you've got a very serious uh, situation with your with your health. Uh, what are the odds yeah. of a, another couple shows? Obviously, that's what I feel I was put on the earth for, was to 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 be on the road, you know. it's It's my safe place and uh, I enjoy it the most. I enjoy all the other facets of what I do, but but the payoff to me has always been going on the road and um, communicating with the audience with the, the material. And uh, so um, we all we all have a couple of clocks right now running. We, we have our life clocks and we have our COVID clock. Mm -hmm. And then I have my, what I call my IBM clock, which is how long are my muscles going to be strong enough to play um, in my hands and arms? And so uh, the longer the COVID um, clock runs um, and we can't play, 
um, then it affects my IBM clock. And can you explain IBM? It's, it's a, the nature yes, of the illness? Yes, it's, it's inclusion body myositis. And it's a very, very rare um, autoimmune. Um, it, it basically um, attacks uh, your body. Your, your body attacks certain muscles in the body. Uh, it, it chooses the arms, the hands, and the quads in the legs. And so um, it, it's very slow moving and I'm, I'm very optimistic. Obviously I'm going to keep playing or writing whatever, as long as I can, but it's, you know, that's always at the back of your mind. You know, I wonder if I'm going to be able to play tomorrow what I can play today. You know, and it's starting to affect my hands. Okay. So well, wherever, where, wherever you are, I'm going to fly out to see another live Peter Frampton show. I can assure you. Uh, well, I want to, uh, nothing would please me more <laughs> than to be able to go back out and finish um, finish the finale. So we had Europe booked already; that had to cancel, but so did everybody else. And and you yeah. know, there's good reason for that. And we're all in the same boat. So I'm not complaining. I'm just uh, biding my time. Yeah. If you do go out, do you think you'll play any Humble Pie stuff? Oh, yes. Why right. wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you can't, I can't, can't leave the stage without doing some pie stuff. You know, it's, they, the audience just love it. So, and what well, we do too, because it's like, you know, we really let it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every time I speak with Mr. Frampton, I, insist on doing my Steve Marriott impression. Uh, it's, it's very short. It's, okay. We go home on Monday. <laughs> From the album. <laughs> the live this album. time it's been a gas. It's really been a gas. So sorry. I, I couldn't get through an interview without doing that. Um, it's okay. It's, it's, it's no better than last time. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, there's a, there's a famous photograph of Hyde Park with all these people in it. I think it's yeah. inside the Grand Funk album or something, but I was there. Hyde Park, London, Humble Pie. Um, it was this gigantic day. And I, for some reason, was about 20 feet from the stage watching you guys. <laughs> what an amazing moment. Had to be great for you to be kind of back home and looking at this sea of people like London's version of Woodstock. Yes, and, and in fact, those photos uh, of Humble Pie are in the center uh, uh, of um, the Gatefold double album, uh, Rock in the Film Hall. So, um, yeah, that's where you saw them. And I've got loads of shots from that day. It was a very triumphant day for Humble Pie um, because we had been um, uh, touring with Grand Funk in America, I believe, way before that. We were at a point... Um, in our musical uh, connection as as players, uh, we knew exactly what we were doing. We didn't talk about it anymore. It was just, we went for it. And we built up an incredible following um, in the States and in England. And so coming back, we weren't quite sure what our following was like in England, <laughs> but we came back and that was just, oh my goodness, the crowd just went bananas. And, uh, you know, we were... Uh, a, just, many, many people like yourself uh, have said that's one of the best concerts they've been to. Yeah, uh, uh, Peter Frampton is our guest. Uh, uh, I noticed uh, when I was watching the Super Bowl how many sort of what would be termed classic rock songs or just great songs ended up in commercials. Do you control the rights to all your stuff so you can prevent uh, a company from coming out with the song, Do You Feel Like a Frankfurter or whatever? Oh, uh, yes. No, I do. I do control. And I can say, um, you know, it's the ones when they want to change the words, and I don't like that. So, yeah. um, you know, either use the song. <laughs> I mean, we had the Rice, rice commercial with um, kids singing Show Me the Way, which I thought was, was very sweet. And uh, I, 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 I like that very, very much. But um, s some, you know, others have been suggested where there are lyric changes and, you know, I don't want to be involved in toilet paper. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, re I really don't want that. Show me the way to a new role or something. I don't Baby, know. I love your wipe. <laughs> exactly. This is exactly thank what he doesn't you, want to do. You I see, know, you I see, know. thank you. Try to avoid that. Uh, uh, Peter Frampton's book is called uh, Do You Feel Like I Do? It's uh, there's it's a wonderful story. 
Um, uh, there's, of course, the famous story about the guitar that's very, very complicated and uh, has a very happy ending. And, uh, and uh, Peter's life is fascinating. I, one of my other favorite moments, if you don't mind my saying, was uh, you were just a kid and you were on TV and uh, David Jones, who had become David Boy, was at home going, how... Wait a minute, this kid's, what's he doing on TV? <laughs> you actually beat yeah, him to said, the tube. Yeah, I did. He said, he actually said, that's Peter. What's he doing on TV? Shouldn't he be at school? <laughs> <laughs> you were like a 16-year-old star, right? A teen star. Yeah. Yeah, that was Top of the Pops, yeah. yeah. There was another story in there, I, th I think it was in there, maybe I read it somewhere else, that uh, when the Rolling Stones were uh, looking to replace Mick Taylor, uh, supposedly three names came up, and one of them was uh, Mr. Frampton. And uh, the, the version was that uh, he's too good looking to be a Rolling Stone. Um, but it, and it turns out that I, I never knew this, that Bill Wyman of the Stones, who is uh, by all accounts, um, my, my sister knows him, he's like the greatest guy on earth. He's such a cool, nice person. Yes. Right. And he yes. was so helpful to you. Yes. Oh, I mean, from uh, the band that we first, um, that I first uh, recorded with Bill being the producer and the manager, basically, the preachers, um, uh, he took us into the studio because the drummer, Tony Chapman, had been the drummer, the very first drummer of the Rolling, early Rolling Stones, and introduced Bill into the band. And then uh, apparently, uh, obviously, Tony was replaced by Charlie. So um, uh, Bill always thought he, you know, well, thought he knew he owed Tony um, big time. And uh, so he said, look, when you get a band together, I'll help you produce it. And, and you know, don't worry, I'll put some money into it, whatever. And so the, the first time we go up, you know, I'm 14 and the rest of the band are probably like 18, 19, 20, maybe. And... Um, and we, <clears throat> we get in this awful old Austin van, rusty old thing, with the gear in the back, you know, and we left the front uh, passenger seat for the Rolling Stone. And we picked him up. He was living over a gas station um, <laughs> at the time <laughs> on the way up to London. Um, and, uh, yeah, he gets in and, and there's all like we've got a Rolling Stone in the front seat. You know, so it was very, very exciting. Then we get up to the studio and um, I started, we started recording this single that, that Bill had suggested we do. And from that, <clears throat> we ended up on Ready, Steady, Go, which was renamed for one week, Ready, Steady, Stones. And um, they oh, took right. it over and, and Bill chose us to be his guest on, on, on each, each stone had their own guest performer. That's nice. So too handsome to be a Rolling Stone. The great Peter Frampton. I La never heard that. I never heard that. <laughs> La lastly, Peter, do you have any rock and roll memorabilia? Um, well, I guess I have old jackets and things like that that I used to. I've got a jacket that I used to wear in the hood. Um, is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean, do you have not necessarily your stuff? I mean, over the years, was there? Did you get like Bowie to sign an album or something, and you framed it? And you know what? I'm I I don't have much of that stuff at all. I mean, um, you don't think about that when someone's your close friend. You know, oh, could you sign this? You know, so no, I have I, I have <laughs> mum. Could you sign this for me? You know, so. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, no, not really. I mean, I have to say that when um, we did the uh, Frampton's Guitar Circus, uh, the first person that came on board um, was B.B. King to open for, open for us. Oh, my goodness. I can't even, it's hard to say that. But he did. But he had me come on every night. And um, he signed a couple of things. Uh, great. Uh, there's a great photo of him kissing me on the cheek on stage and I've got one of those. And then he signed all the band's guitars and I I didn't get mine signed. Why? Oh. I don't know. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, Peter, we'll let you go. Uh, Mr. Peter Frampton um, is a, a legend in the world of rock, a Grammy winner with some new albums on the way out, some blues stuff. And the book is called Do You Feel Like I Do? You can read it or do what I did and uh, have Mr. Frampton read it to me. Sounds good. It, it, yeah, it I, I really enjoyed, I, again, it's the performance of it. The, the writing and the editing was... <clears throat> 
was uh, the editing was the most difficult part. So it didn't because we you do you you sit down and you talk and you tape it and then it gets transcribed and then you read it and you go, good lord, this man is just a rambling idiot. <laughs> so uh, you have to uh, <laughs> you have to sit down and edit it. Um, so it sounds like you are actually sitting down and writing it. And uh, so the actual performance, which took uh, ten days, um, about two to three. Well, two to four hours a day, um, went into my studio and um, and then um, just read it. And I, I just really enjoyed going through. It was the first time I'd read it in so many. <laughs> I'd been editing it all this time. And it's the first time I'd read it from beginning to end. I'd done all the work and um, because we were able to edit further at that point. And um, so, no, I really enjoyed it. And I, I got into it a little bit, did some accents and, you yeah. know. Do other voices. Yeah. And, and it's terrific. I love the parts where you talk about the creation of the songs and specific concerts and, of course, the live album and the the, the ups and the downs, of which there were many. But we're glad yes, you're up yes. now. So glad you're uh, <laughs> doing great. And um, I really hope that the clocks that are running uh, allow you to go back on the road yeah. And uh, do you think you will do some stuff in the states? Do you think you'll have time to do a few shows stateside? Oh, I, if if we're going to do, uh, if it's feasible for me um, physically and and obviously safety wise, I can't imagine we wouldn't. Okay, well we'll, <laughs> so we'll be there. I would, I would love to. I would love we'll to. We'll be there. Pat and I flew to London to see the Cream reunion. So yeah. if we have to, we may have to fly to London to see <laughs> see Mr. Frampton. Uh, well, I, yeah, we had, it's funny because, well, funny and a little bit sad, but only after the, 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 sh the lockdown in, in March, we were supposed to go to, uh, to, to Europe and the UK in uh, May. And we had a date, um, you know, the first date, and we'd all left them in our calendars. So every day your computer comes up and goes, bing, yeah. you're supposed to be in Manchester, <laughs> you know. But when it, when it got to the Albert Hall, um, that day, we all called each other, the whole band and crew went, oh, yeah, we, we want to be in the album. You know, so it was it was sad, but hopefully we'll be able to do it again. Okay. I, 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 this story may make you laugh. I, I'm going to tell you a quick story about the Albert Hall. Uh, Pat and I did fly over to see the Cream reunion, and we went to the first show. And um, I don't know if you happened to see that, if you were there or if you heard about it, but uh, at one point, uh, Ginger Baker was wearing a cream T-shirt, <laughs> and he stops the show, and he does a pitch for buying the shirts, and I could sort of see Clapton. <laughs> he was not happy. Clapton, Clapton was, not. was not pleased. <laughs> and I'm sure Eric did that show to help those two guys. And just to see this, 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 this T-shirt shill. <laughs> oh, no. It was really funny. Uncomfortable funny. <laughs> but uh, they, of course, were great, and it was a, it was another great rock and roll show. Anyway, Peter Frampton, I don't want you to stretch your voice out too much talking to these two idiots. Wait a minute, that's us. Uh, the great Peter Frampton. The book is wonderful. I can't wait to hear these new blues albums. And uh, thanks so much for all the joy the and happiness in music. Album. Instrumental yes. album, though, yes. April 23rd. There we Phantom go. Phantom forgets the words. Yes, the day after Love your it. birthday. That's right, yeah. Uh, and your next album, Too Pretty for the Stones. <laughs> 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 thank you, sir. All right, thank you, guys. You're the Bye. best. Mr.